Hey guys, welcome to this week's episode of Vinny's Vittles. You know, the weather is starting to turn the right direction and warm up, which means barbecue season. And I love to barbecue, but I don't have a grill here in Vinny's Vittles. So we're going to try this in the oven, but I think it's still going to be delicious and I think you'll like it. Well, the recipe today is basically a dry rub that we're going to concoct together. You're going to put all the ingredients together, store them in an uh, airtight a jar they'll stay good for about six months and then we'll show you how to put it all together we're going to be using these ingredients today we've got some cayenne pepper and some cumin some onion powder and some garlic powder salt pepper some brown sugar we're going to be using some chili powder and some paprika and we're going to be combining those together now as always you'll find the complete list of ingredients and how much it takes to make this rub uh, in the description box below so let's get started combining our ingredients. All right, guys, let's start combining our ingredients. We're gonna add the sea salt. It's important, this sea salt, not the, I, how do you say it? Iodized. Iodized salt. salt. <laughs> then we're gonna add some fresh ground pepper. We're gonna add the cumin and the cayenne pepper. Then we're gonna add the chili powder. Then the onion powder and the garlic powder. Then we're going to add in the paprika. And you can notice it takes a lot of paprika compared to the others. And then to top it all off, brown sugar. I almost got it in there without missing any. All right, then I'm just using a mason jar to put this in. And I'm going to seal it up good. And then I'm just going to combine the ingredients by shaking it. Get them all mixed up nice and good. You want to do this a good bit because you want to make sure that you get as many of the little lumpy chunks of the brown sugar out. And that's the best way I know to do it, just to combine. And what we don't get done, we'll break up when we start putting it on. So now we've got our ingredients combined. Let's go ahead and apply it to our pork tenderloin. All right, so we took the ingredients out of the mason jar, put them in a, uh, an individual bowl. Then we're just kind of using my hand to make sure that all the lumps that I talked about before are out. Then we're just going to apply it to the pork tenderloin and get a good coat on it. Now don't worry, we're going to do both sides so that we got plenty on it. And in our, our household, there's a little sign that we use sometimes when we need something, especially if we need it from uh, Papa. It's called a pat pat rub. Anytime the boys needed some cash to go to the concession stand or whatever, they did the pat pat rub. So we're going to do the pat pat rub on our pork tenderloin. It's a good technique, pat pat rub. <laughs> we're going to flip it over, add some to this side. Same thing, pat pat and rub. Now let's do this side, this one. Flip her over, add a little bit more. I interrupt this video broadcast <laughs> to say to you, if you're making this in your home, use the clean hand, dirty hand technique, okay? So dirty hand does the rub and clean hand does this. Benny don't do that and he's not going to do that today no matter what I say to him for you guys. But the truth of the matter is, He's gonna use most of that rub on this meat anyway, but if you're wanting to save this for later, don't do meat hand in bowl. We don't want cross-contamination. No cross-contamination. Love you guys. Bless y'all's heart. I think y'all worry too much. <laughs> we don't want salmonella or a tapeworm you're messing with pork. Oh, good Lord. Ain't no pork problems. All right, so we got the tenderloin nice and covered. Now we're gonna put it on a rack and put it inside the oven on 350 until the interior temperature of the meat is about 155 degrees. Now you can cook pork to 145 degrees, but my family gets a little freakish if it's too pink. So we're going to 155 degrees on an interior temperature and then it'll be ready. So we're gonna put it in the oven. We'll be right back quickly. I interrupt this video production to say, if you're gonna do this method with the pan and the rack, Cover this pan with aluminum foil to save the person in your house doing dishes a little bit of elbow grease.
All right, guys, we took it out of the oven. Now, on 350 to get to the desired temperature, we left it in the oven about 40 minutes, somewhere in that neighborhood, 40, 45 minutes, uh, to get the, the desired temperature that we want. Now, whenever I slice a tenderloin, you can look at it and see the beautiful caramelization of all of the, um, the rub that we put on there, all right? But when I slice it, I like to slice at an angle. So I'm gonna get my fork in, then I'm gonna come in and slice from the side. Kind of like that. And you can see the beautiful coloration there in the meat. You can see the nice uh, bright color of the rub and then the pork. Now, again, this is going to be a little pink, okay, because you don't want to overcook your pork. If you do, it'll be dry and tough. But if you let it be just a little pink, It'll taste so tender and juicy. All right, Caleb, how's that look to you? Looks great. All right, let's cut us off a piece and see how it tastes. See if that sweet and spicy rub tastes as good as it smells. All right, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm gonna take that piece right there. All right. Ready, here we go. Oh yeah. Mm, that rub. Got a little spice to it and a little sweetness from the brown sugar. The taste is perfect. The temperature is just right. Nice and tender and still juicy. Perfect. You guys will love this recipe. Now, just as always, I want you to click that red button at the bottom to subscribe and ring the bell so you're always notified every week when Vinny's Vittles comes back. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day. Bye-bye.